Yeah, yeah, we want to uh, welcome y'all to the next installment of the So Unprofessional show. This is your host, Mr. Barksdale. And I'm Gus. Uh, so we back for another one, man. I know, man. That's good shit. You little, look a little spiffy. You got the button all the way up to the yeah, top. Yeah, that's all good, man. You better be lucky that camera can't show your motherfucking ink. Yo, like man. You, yo, look like you was kicking blow. Boston, <laughs> kicking blow. Kicking blow. Boston fucking George. You fucking ain't yeah, coat, man. I'm, I'm feeling some type of way the fact that you actually looking at my ankles and shit. I wasn't, I really wasn't the. I mean, you fucking, admire my ankles and shit. I didn't admire that. Do, I'm just saying that. Do the, you normally be. The just, ninja cat was walking around in here being devious, and I thought he was about to scratch your leg because he thought it was like a snow tree or something. So I was really protecting A you. snow tree? You just yeah. making up shit now? Nah, you know what snow trees are. What's a snow tree? The motherfucking trees that be in the snow. What the fuck is wrong with you? A tree that be in the snow. That's right. Like when you in like Alaska and shit, those ain't regular trees, nigga. They snow trees. So what What about the oak tree outside when it's snow? When it wants to get snow on it, does that no, mean it's a snow no, tree? No, because that's a tree that survived the elements. That motherfucker got survived the summer, the fall, and all that. But them trees that be like in Alaska and Antarctica. I need one are, viewer to actually comment that you know what the fuck a snow tree is. Because you're just making up shit. I'm not making up shit. Like usually first I go all, along with shit, but a fucking all, snow my tree? My credentials say I'm more educated than you, so I know what I'm talking about and you don't. I'm yes. Googling snow tree. Yeah, I'm going Google fucking uh, uh, Lubadon. No, directly. Can you Google snow tree? Because this shit. It, this shit ain't right. I'm trying to divert from the fact that my ankles ashy and shit. Listen, if you you know, beer, if you pour beer on your ankles, it'll it'll work for a little bit. How do you know? Have you poured beer on the ashy part of your body before? Like one time I got out of the shower and I uh and I dried off and ain't putting no lotion on my ankle was dry and I was sipping beer and the beer fell on my ankle. You like, oh that's some good shit. I was like, oh shit, it's it's brown right there. So it might work out for you. You should try it. That's some new shit, huh? Yo, we should cut so you can put some lotion on your ankles. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Alright. I guess the first topic everybody's been talking about this week. is Kevin Hart and his homophobic tweets. I know. He got he got it. You can't say anything offensive against the LGBTQ. You can. Nope. You can. We're not gonna do it here either. Why not? So you tell me I can't say f you can say it, okay. but there's a. This is like this thing called editing where we get to bleep it out. It's cool. Well, let's let's test it out. F it, f it, f it. Well, it doesn't happen in real time. Okay, then I can say what I want. So you said you wanted to read the tweet. So you gonna read the tweet? Uh, well, okay. So basically, Kevin Hart nine years ago, when Twitter was jumping, decided to go on Twitter and just have like a homophobic rant. So like the first one, he like, if my son come home and try to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, stop, that's gay. So, I mean, I don't think, I think that's pretty bad, like child abuse wise. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to break a fucking whole dollhouse over your kid's head and say, stop, that's oh, gay. I don't think I was supposed to laugh. Can you edit like, out that laugh? I'm cool with the stop, that's gay. Well, why do you have to break the dollhouse over his head? So then he. So that's uh, like literally gay bashing, huh? Yeah. So then he, uh, I don't even know who Damien D.W. is, says, why does his profile pic look like a gay billboard for AIDS? Boom, I'm on fire tonight. Uh, yeah, putting gay people on AIDS in the same sense. I was cool with the AIDS, but, but then when you start, I don't know. You're just bugging out. You're just bugging out. And then I don't know who Wayne215 is. Why does he have so much pictures of me in his phone? What are you, some type of fat fag that takes pics of small black men all day? Come on, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Uh. Well, I think the, the, the issue is, mm -hmm. so he was supposed to host the Oscars. Yeah. Um, they announced it out of nowhere. I don't know how be, people just keep their tweets forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. Someone decided to dig up nine-year-old tweets, mm -hmm. which you just read. And so the Academy called him up, like, we're going to need you to apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to continue to be the host, which he said, well, I have apologized already mm -hmm. uh, multiple times and I'm not doing it again. Mm -hmm. And then he went on, I don't know, maybe it was Instagram and let the world know that he wasn't going to do it. He's mm -hmm. not down for the whole trolling because mm -hmm. they're just bringing it up to be a troll because mm -hmm. he already did apologize for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately he did another post where he actually did apologize again 
but he still said he wasn't doing the show because I guess he doesn't. He didn't like. It did seem like he didn't like the fact that the um, academy said either gave him an ultimatum. So yeah. either you apologize again or you don't get to do the show. Well, isn't Kevin Hart worth like a hundred million? I think it might be more than that. Isn't he like a hundred million dollar man or something like that? Pretty much. Well, the Oscars could suck dick. Like I, if I'm worth that type of money, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna apologize for shit, especially something I already apologized for. Like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And not to mention, they be struggling for ratings anyway. Motherfuckers done already came out and accused the Oscars of being racist. I think that was a couple years ago, maybe like two or three years ago, when they was asking like Black Hollywood to boycott the Oscars, and the motherfuckers went out and uh, asked Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock to like host the Oscars. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get some of that black audience back. He should have turned that shit down anyway. He crossed enemy lines. Fuck the Oscars. I mean, I see it as just another another event where black people are trying to gain acceptance. Yeah. Where they're not wanted in the first place. Yeah. I mean, Holly Berry literally had to let some old wrinkled white man fuck her to win an Oscar. You know what I'm saying? And Denzel had to be and Denzel super gangster. Had to, all the movies. Yeah, he, all the movies he been that was uplifting. Like, I thought he should have got an Oscar for John Q. You get his motherfucker an Oscar for Lorenzo. <laughs> that, wasn't, that, wasn't, wasn't that his name in Training Day? King Kong ain't, ain't got, got shit on me. me. That motherfucker said nigga at least <laughs> more times in that movie than he probably said in his whole career of movies. And they give him an Oscar for that. You know what I mean? My good, good way to yeah. be stereotypical black men. You know what I'm saying? So, I didn't know was, you get wet though. Huh? What did he say? <laughs> when he had the white boy smoking wet, oh. he's like, in the car, he's like, I know you get wet though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, man. I Fuck the Oscars, man. Kevin, I feel like Kevin Hart did the right thing, man. I'm cool with Kevin Hart doing Yeah, right I wasn't going to watch that shit either. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I've ever watched the Oscars in my life. I just wait for it to come on YouTube and tell me who won. Fuck him. So next, I think we need to take a little break. Okay. Talk about your homie. My homie? RG3. Uh, Robert Griffin the third. Yeah, okay. All right. And of course, you know, our main man T is going to show the picture mm -hmm. and see what we talk about. Mm -hmm. How do you like his Christmas card photo with his uh, lovely wife and his... Uh, I don't even know what to call it. First of all, I didn't know that that was RG3. I thought that was Rick James. Because that motherfucking haircut looked crazy. Like, he looked like he had, like, one of them perm, one of them perm relaxers from Malcolm X. <laughs> and his shit, and he left that shit in too long. What they call it? Conk or something? Yeah, like that? I, I, don't, I don't know what the fuck's up with RG3 anyway. Like, he, like, I thought he was a good football player in college. You know what I'm saying? But I guess what he throws me off is... Uh, like, you get signed for all this money and you got these dumbass braids in your hair. You know what I mean? I mean, like, even Meek cut his braids off when he got up some money. Like, what the fuck, bro? They cut and pay you all this money, you got these dumbass braids. Well, you cut them off now. And then you cut the dumbass braids off and you don't even go get a shape up and, like, a real cut. Like, his shit look bullshit. Like, he got, like, a whole... Like, he's, like, stashing a kitten in his head or something like that. Like, that shit is bullshit. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe he, he actually thought, like, I ain't got to worry about people pushing my hairline back if I just don't have a hairline. Maybe that's, maybe that's all, helping him out. Like First of all, he look like one of them motherfuckers from Ninja Turtles, like Bebop or Rocksteady or one of them niggas. <laughs> and, like, I, uh, RG3 just got to chill. Like, I ain't going to lie, his, uh, his white bitch bad, though. She Why tough. can't she be a white woman? Young white lady. Why can't she be a black woman? Because it doesn't seem like he likes black women. It doesn't look like he likes women either. He likes bitches. Maybe he doesn't like... Maybe black women don't like him. I don't think no bitches like him if he's looking like fucking... Uh, what's the... Like the Christmas alligator or whoever the fuck he is. Like, his like, shit is just like if your up. average black woman walked up to you and you had that type of... I don't even want to call it haircut because it doesn't look like a haircut. Like, first off, let's just keep it real, man. We done seen some of the weirdest niggas out here with bad bitches, so, I mean, just because they had money, so it's not like RG3 broke, like, he far from broke, so he, he could get some black bitches, man. You know what? Some you know what? I know this is not on topic. Yeah. But I saw something, again, I saw something complaining about uh, black men and white women. Yeah. And 
it bothers me because I've seen it like in real life mm -hmm. where like the nut black dude mm -hmm. can't get no black girls. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, because he's a nerd or whatever he does, he winds up being successful. I'm gonna keep so the, at the earlier earlier his life, the only women he could get was white chicks. Mm -hmm. And then once he gets older, that's what he's used to. I'm gonna keep it real with you though. Like getting black bitches might be the curse though. Cause like you think about the athletes that get black bitches, sometimes they don't get drafted in the first round. And then like they get injured and all that. What kind of self-hating shit? I'm just I'm just keeping it a being like you think about motherfuckers that been top draft picks. They got white bitches. Like RG three was like top three draft pick. He got a white bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this could not. This like, segment could not get like, like OJ Simpson, man. OJ Simpson, the Hall of Fame running back, top three draft pick. He got he got white bitches, man. Like I like that. It might be some achievement about cocky milk and magnesia. I'm not co of this shit, man. Hey, man I, this I, this I listen, just can't man. go well. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. I mean, it might go over with the. The white people, but I'm just keeping it all the way real. Like you tell me, somebody who got drafted in the lottery that had a black chick. The way way you get drafted, I don't know where you got drafted. And you get drafted in the lottery. Um, LeBron James. Well, he was single when he got drafted. No, he had his, he had the same girl all this he time. Yeah, baby mama, but he was. You don't think he was slaying? You don't think he was slaying? He was 18, first pick in the draft. Couldn't shoot a jump shot? You, you don't think he was getting some ass? Like white women, like white women, one thing, like I was watching Blindside, one thing about white women, yo, when they know that you got a potential to get a star, <laughs> them motherfuckers They hold you stern. down. <laughs> them motherfuckers are stern. Like Kobe Bryant, his wife wasn't with him shooting in the gym, but if he had a white bitch, she'd have been in the, in the, in the gym with him and, and bouncing, passing him the shots. There you go. More arc and elbow. You know what I mean? Shout out to Tiger Woods wife. She, That's, she listen, made a come man. up. Listen, man. And she, she took half a billy from him. Yeah, and she damn near killed him with a golf club. <laughs> you know Ruined saying? his career yeah. for like. So she ain't no pushover. I mean, I'm just saying, man, if you want to get drafted in the top five, man, get you a white chick. I think that's, the moral, I think that's the moral of the story. And I, wore, I wore dashiki last time. I yeah, wore my pro black You was looking like a clown. See, she got you a white chick. With a dashiki on her. You had you a white chick, she'd be like, no, babe, don't wear that dumbass dashiki. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, Mrs. Gus, but you let him come out with that fucking neon. Nah, she ain't see it. Oh, yeah, she, she wasn't she home might, when I left. Yeah, she just slapped the shit out of <laughs> you. Know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just, I'm, just keeping, I'm just keeping it real. Like, uh, Yo, I, I have to admit, though. Yeah. I did see the video afterwards. Yeah. That was a dumbass dashiki. I told you. I told you. It was out of like, well, fucking the Black Panther that got put out of Wakanda. You know what I'm saying? That was the dumbass thing. Yeah, that shit was goofy, man. And so, I, I did wear it to be a smart ass. I did. It wasn't being smart to me because I wasn't paying attention to any goofy shit. Yeah, it did look out goofy. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. we would just like to say, or I would like to say, that I love black women. I love black women, too. But if I was an uh, athlete and I'm about to get drafted, I'm not fucking with no black woman. <laughs> nope, I'm going right to the motherfucking Caucasoids. <laughs> What's a Caucasoid? People from the Caucasus Mountains. Just making shit up again. Am I fucking making... snow trees, Caucasoid? You never heard of a Caucasoid? That's that's what I'm saying, man. Just stop talking, man. Just stop talking. The people know what we're talking about. I'm gonna Google Caucasoid. Okay. We got Mr. Brizzy on the beat. Brizzy, did I, did I say it right? On the beat. Yeah, yeah. I know he, I called you Breezy on the yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I would just like to say he kind of he kind of scared us earlier when we said his name wrong. <laughs> he got kinda, I thought he was going to get violent, especially with you, because you look like a little like he might not. I, punch I you got in a, I, I got something to say oh, about that. Yeah, I was going to sick the fucking cat on. Him. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to help him. He, no. tried, he was about to knock your ass out. He knew nah. it. I, I ran interference. He nah. walking. He walk in the studio. I'm allergic to cats. Big ass cat just jumped like, oh shit, my nigga, you allergic? <laughs> Let me work my way over it. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, he's about to knock your ass out. Nah, man. It, it, first of all, about the cat situation. <laughs> I'm allergic to cats. I, I, don't, I don't care who crib I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'll be at an a artist session, or whatever the case is. And I tell him straight up, like, yo, I'm allergic to cats. You feel me? Your guy put the cat in the basement upstairs, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Whatever the case is. But. 
um, as far as Breezy yeah. goes, I had so many situations where people just be like, what's up, Breezy? What's up, Breezy? And I look at my shirt. Yeah, I'm not really I'm, I was just like, I, don't, I mean, for me, you know, everybody looks at stuff differently. So I don't, I don't judge mm-hmm. people, you yeah. feel me? And I don't like to come off the wrong way when yeah. I say, yo, yeah. that's not my name. You True, know but you got to stand up for your name. So, you know, I have to now. It's not Breezy on, it's not Breezy on the beat. Mm-hmm. It's not Brizzy on the beat. It's Brizzy on the beat. Well, I did. I think I did say the th a couple of times. In the yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's cool. Though. Sorry, but you know they say people only read the first and last letter anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you I know. see a B and a Y, I'm thinking Brizzy. It's all My good. Man. It's all good. So God, talk, God is good. We here today. Man, you good. know what I mean? So, so talk to us, man. You know. uh you know, last time, last time we, we 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 heard your name heavily, and associated with us, you he was here with one of your artists. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that's doing some heavy work. I got a chance to listen to that to that to her to our project. Okay. I'm assuming you did a, a lot of the production on that project. Yeah, I did too. You know what I mean? So she had you definitely definitely heard some good stuff on that project. So now we got you here. So what's new with Brizzy on the? Beat. Oh man, I, I always say this, man. Thank you, God, for life, man. Because you know, without him, I won't be here today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, there's a lot of things going on. Um, you know, uh, uh, recently I, I had the honor of like working with uh, PNB Rock for okay. his new project. Um, I had I had I had a production on there um, mm-hmm. alongside with my homie uh, Andrew Miori. We produced um, Never Lacking on his project. He just Andrew dropped a Miori, new. Andrew Miori, I heard that name. Before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you have you have to hear about him. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a banger on there. Uh, I was able to produce on on Rock's project. Um, got a lot of stuff in the tuck getting ready to drop. Yeah. Um, a lot of young bulls in the city of Philly. We got. Uh, you know, Zasosa, new Zasosa on the way, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, you know, for all the viewers that are outside of Philly that watch this, you know, you, 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 Philly is like the, the, the new wave of rappers, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, getting ready to really make a crazy, crazy name for themselves. Mm-hmm. If they stay focused, yeah. if they stay, you know, committed to the grind and Love stuff like women, that, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, got a lot of new music getting ready to drop with a lot of, you know, up and coming artists in Philly and, and a few a few major artists as well. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what's the dream goal for Brizzy? You know, what I mean, Brizzy, you know, the Brizzy won his name on that Mount Rushmore producers, you oh, know, man. like right now, if you had if we if everybody talking, you know, you got to name your top four producers. In hip hop, like an all time, you always gonna get like a Dre. Mm-hmm. You always gonna get like a like a Timberland. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't forget about Premier. Yeah. Well, well, you, you hesitate on. Premier. I mean, you know, you hesitate on my nah, I, I can't hesitate on Premier. You gonna get a Premier. You gonna but you, I'm talking about like those monsters though. Like Premier, he a legend, but we talking about those monsters. Like when when if Timberland touch a beat for you, man, you already mm-hmm. know what it is. Swiss Beats, he one of those monsters too. You know what I mean? So you talking like Swiss. Uh, I don't know, Who you tell me, who's your top four producers in hip hop of all time? Man, I'm, I, of all time, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, 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 I'm really indecisive, man. I'm not mm-hmm. like, I'm not like a person that has like a favorite football team. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love the Eagles. That's my favorite team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm kind of like biased with them because I'm from Philly. Yeah. You know. Um. But basketball, I love the Sixers. But I love other teams as well too. Yeah. Um. But as far as like production goes, I have like my favorites. I have my people that that motivate me for some for nope. certain reasons. Mm-hmm. You know. So what I'm who's saying? your favorites? My favorites that I can just name real quick, I would say for one, Zaytoven. Okay. Um, you know, he really inspired, he really helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Not like personally, yeah. but mentally he really helped me a whole lot with, you know, just motivation. Yeah. Uh, his story is a lot similar to my, mm-hmm. my upbringing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metro Boomin. Yeah, Metro Boomin. You Boomin. know, uh, like it's the same thing. He's like a mental mentor to me. Yeah. Uh, Pharrell, mm-hmm. uh, Scott Storch, mm-hmm. Ryan Leslie. Yeah. Um, Just Blaze, yeah. uh, you know, of course, those Swiss are monster beats. producers, though. Yeah, man. Oh, always uh, forget about stuff. Scott Storch. You know, people forget about Ryan Leslie, man. Yeah, people forget about Ryan Leslie, you know, and you know, shout out to him. He was definitely a, a high influence, just like Pharrell was to yeah. me. Um, and this is all mental mentors, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, again, uh, like I said, um, 
Scott Storch, uh, mm-hmm. Timberland, of course, yeah, Kanye West. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other up and coming producers that really inspire me as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably just can't come to name right now, but yeah. I'm inspired by sound, by music. You know, and and there's a lot of great producers that are up and coming that are doing their thing. You know, like Lex Luger, Molly yeah. Raw. Yeah. You know, those are other inf- you know influences that really motivate me. Yeah. So so what's the end goal for Brizzy? The end goal is to definitely, you know, just, just, I don't want to say like be, be like, I don't say this in no cocky fashion, but I definitely want to be a legend, Yeah. you know, in my own right, mm-hmm. you know, uh, if not to the world, at least to my family, yeah. you know, more, more than anything, because I'm, I, I do this full time. I don't, yeah. I, I went to Penn State, graduated, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I didn't had to, I didn't been in corporate America, I didn't worked. Nine mm-hmm. to fives. I done had jobs that paid you forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. Things mm-hmm. like that. You know, a lot of people who, you know, get out of college, they go straight to work and they stay in their careers. I just decided to like really just ch- chase my dream. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it took me a minute to realize that, but you know, once I really realized that, that's what I, you know, this is what I wanted to do. I said, man, I'm just going hard. You know, yeah. so then, then result is just to you know die a legend, make sure my my family at least sees the brighter side of life before, mm-hmm. you know, you know, time is the most important thing in life, man. Yeah. You know, the only so, thing you can't get back. Yeah. So what part of, uh, tell me a couple stories or how it is to be a producer with people who actually don't see. Because a lot of people see the end product, but they don't see the grind, yeah. you know. It's a grind, man. It's like day in and day out, you gotta be in a, in, in work mode, mm-hmm. man, trying to make the new sound, the new wave, because the new wave, the new sounds just change like that. You can wake up and next thing you know, you got a beat that just has a, a 808 and nothing. And then the 808 drops and then nothing. <laughs> you know, so you gotta be, you gotta adapt to, to different sounds every single day. Mm-hmm. And I'm a type of producer that literally studies all of that stuff because I don't have a, a sound. Mm-hmm. I don't have a sound. Like I try hard to like find like my signature sound. Mm-hmm. You know, like how yeah. I would say like Pharrell has mm-hmm. that signature sound. Yeah. You know, he has that that I think it's like a four bar count drop before the the, the beat comes on, mm-hmm. and he has that you know nice piano scale. Scott Storch, he kind of sort of has a signature sound, but he plays a piano, so you never know if it's a Scott Storch joint. Mm-hmm. I'm like that, you know, I don't really have like a signature sound, but I have to just, excuse me, I have to, you know, just learn and adapt and things like that. And you gotta stay, you gotta, you gotta stay committed, you know, and you, you go through a lot of stress dealing with all kind of different artists because there's like different personalities, picky artists, artists that want to like that want to beat that sounds like this and you're trying to make that it's it's and a then lot. you got ass artists <laughs> like don't forget yeah, about them yeah, you yeah, got yeah, people I that mean, come to the studio you know, and they spending money but they ass but you know what a great uh, uh, you know my, my a good friend of mine always told me mm-hmm. those ass artists are the ones that keep the lights on Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I treat everybody like the, you know, like uh, they, like they Jay Z. You know what I'm saying. I treat everybody like, like, nah, nah, <laughs> nah. I keep it real though. I keep it a hundred. So, you, so you, I keep it a hundred. So you keep a hundred. You keep it a hundred. I keep it a hundred. Like, like hold on, homie. That last bar was kind of hard. I don't know if you keep it a hundred. I keep it a hundred because you said just worry about the lights on. Nah, but but let me let me let me let me let me let me fix that. Let me explain that. Yeah, they keep the lights on. I don't give up on them unless mm-hmm. they give up on themselves or they just assholes. If you're just going to be an asshole and you don't know, you don't accept my, you know, constructive criticism, mm-hmm. then, I mean, I personally can't work with you. So, if somebody was paying you like $10,000 a beat, and, mm-hmm. and that might not be a lot of money to you. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but he come in there and his shit is straight garbage. Mm-hmm. God, this nigga garbage <laughs> ass. Are oh, you gonna be like, nah, I'm cool off your money. Let me get my beat back. Somebody walk this nigga out. Man, the you know what? For me personally, bro, all honesty is about your attitude. Bro. Yeah. If you ass, but you cool as hell, <laughs> and you not like on so some like, like cocky bro. stuff. Like it's not like you. You imagine somebody coming to you. They super cocky. Like I'm this. I'm that. I got. Bands, I got hundred thousand dollars and this, that, and the third. They play, they, they play their music. 
and it's just like, what the, you know what I'm saying? But, but bro, I'm going to keep it being like, I personally am like, a, I, then, you know, you don't have to agree with this. I know yeah. your producer coming up. These are views of Mr. Barksdale. Mm-hmm. But I'm a fan of like Lil Baby. I love Lil Baby. But people be well, like. Who's, pla- who's blasting Lil Baby on the way people be like, Lil Baby ass. They and I just wonder like, when he was on the come up, and he come in the studio and be like, yeah, I want this beat right there. And he come there with all his jewels on, smelling the funny weed with all this money. <laughs> and he start rapping. And the producer be like, yo, this nigga's fucking garbage. Yo, my man, raise your voice. Yo, my man, <laughs> you off beat. This shit sound like this. You are fucking terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like, who knew that that terrible nigga was going to turn out to be like Lil Baby? Man. Or even like Moneybag Yo. I think Moneybag Yo. Before he was money bag, yo, people used to be in the studio and be like, this nigga is fucking horrible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then he blew up and now everybody wanna work with him. So it's like, you know, oh, are you are you are you rolling the dice with artists like that that wanna spend their money with you or are you just like, man, if I can't tolerate your sound, get the fuck away from me. I mean it's a little bit of combination of both, man. Mm-hmm. But it goes back to the attitude, man. Mm-hmm. It's all about your attitude. Like I I'm a person that just I can't get down with negative vibes i just can't you know what i'm saying and sometimes i mean listen i'm I, i'm i'm a i'm not a cutthroat person but i keep it a being mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like if 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 an artist is like if the song isn't coming out right mm-hmm. you know i would definitely give my input but at the end of the day it's on you and yeah i will take somebody bread if they offering or that that much money they want to work with me and mm-hmm. stuff like that but i'm building a little producer team now mm-hmm. you know um oh that means you about to start handing people off <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you should see my my d producer because you're just not a and b quality i think you should i knew y'all were gonna say that i knew y'all were gonna say that let me explain okay let me explain it's not because of that it's because of the workload I'm mm-hmm. one producer. Yeah, so you only want the hot artists. It's not even just the the hot artists. I collab with a lot of producers. Okay. I collaborate with almost everyone in the city that mm-hmm. makes beats. You True. know what I'm saying? So it's but So it's, it's like it's like the medical assistant. Like <laughs> medical assistant come in and do all the work. The doctor come in for like five minutes, be like, uh uh yeah. Or it's yeah. like Doctor <laughs> it's like Dr. Dre. A uh, Dr. Dre had uh Hitman and uh, no. who's the other guy? Break, Bell, break, break it down a few brackets. Mm-hmm. Timberland, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Timberland. Timberland wasn't making all them beats, man. He was definitely jacking. My fair, my fair. I, I mean, listen, I don't know. I don't nah, know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about this this specific oh. beat. Okay. This specific beat, uh, Icebox. I think someone else made that. Remember Icebox for Mario? For, uh, for Mario, yeah. Yeah, I, I forget the producer's name, but like you know, he there there are ghost producers and co-producers. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And things like that. And I, I wasn't really a fan of that until I realized that I, I checked my email and I had like 19 artists mm-hmm. that wanted beats. And it's just like some of them were like, you know, cash apping and PayPal and depositing, hitting up my management and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I was just like, dang. Yeah. I need some help. So you so you telling me you wouldn't be like one of them dudes that just add a little bit of drums to it and be like, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Come in here. Like Puff Daddy used to do. Puff Nigga, Daddy, I added that, that drum right there. That's mine. Daddy walk in the studio. Take that, take that. I made that shit. I produced that shit. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you know, I give credit where it's due. True indeed. I, mean, I give credit me. where it's due. I'm a di- I don't, I mean, sh- I don't know what other people do, but I give credit, man. You can add a hi hat or a snare into the beat. Mm-hmm. You know, and if I get that joint place to PNB Rock, or if I get that joint place to Rico Havoc, mm-hmm. or somebody like, I mean, if you hear it, you gonna want yeah. a cut, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was in there. I added that. I added that. I added that. Come on, bro. That's a game, Brizzy. Brizzy, I added that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'll add, I'll add a snare in there. Just, just give me a cheesesteak from Max's. Something I heard in about of, in a bottle of Jack. Something I heard. Something I heard because I, I recently went to Temple, like I think like last year or two mm-hmm. years ago, or whatever. And I went to Temple to. I was interested in getting my masters. Yeah. I was like, man. I'm not gonna get my masters. I woke up one day, I was just like, man, I'm not gonna get my masters in music. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, as I'm doing a producer thing, maybe if I wanna go get a a, a, a career in some type of like A and R work, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got the credentials to show. I was thinking all that crap, right? I went in there and I, and I and I spoke to one one representative there, and they was telling me how Kanye was. He's one of them dudes that really give you credit for just being in the room. Yeah. 
he like I, I don't know which song it was, but I heard he literally added him on the credits of of the song because mm-hmm. he was just in the room. Yeah, like what's your name? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure this kid probably had to go get a lawyer and yep. he got contracts from whatever label kind he signed to, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean. So I think that's a good look though because mm-hmm. I mean if it like right now like. You know, the cameras show us three, but it's a lot of people involved in this creative process going on right now. And you know, if you were holding on to every minute, it's like the, this magic that's being made right now at this moment couldn't happen without everybody being where they're supposed to be at right mm-hmm. now at this moment. So yeah, give them all, give them all credit. I try to give credit where it, where 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 it's due, man. It's it's only right, it's only fair, mm-hmm. and you know. Even for people that helped me out along the way, I'll never forget that crap, man. I'll never True. forget it. Man. And so, th- I guess this this is my final question, and then I, you know I'll, I'll let Gus go into some more questions. This is just more mm-hmm. of a personal question. Like, are you prepared to be the dickhead, the snake, and the bastard that it takes to be a, a billionaire? Nah. If that's, I mean, like, What's considered a dickhead, or you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you look at a lot of famous bill. You look like a look look at a lot of famous billionaires, and so even some of the billionaires that's not famous, like that's not a platform that is built for a lot of people at the top. Mm-hmm. That's a platform built for one person at the top, and everybody lifting that person up, and that's how that person got there. Though it might have been people with that person. That helped them get there, but then the next thing you know, excuse me, the next thing you know, those people are falling by the wayside. So that person can stand on top of that pyramid. And it's lonely being that rich person like that. You Mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? And so I guess like the question is, because everybody say, you know, you talk to people and they on the grind and and, and some people are focused on the money, some people are focused on the art. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And sometimes it just seems like, when you focus on the money, and everybody say, I'm bringing my team with me, I'm bringing my team with me. They don't realize that the richer you get, the more you shaving you shaving people off of you, mm-hmm. and then the next thing you know, you got all this money that was your dream, but that team that's around you ain't around you no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some of them you did dirty, some of them you treated like dickheads, some of them you snaked, some of them you just got rid of because you thought they were snaking you. Like, are you prepared to be that person on top of that pyramid by yourself? I'll tell you like this, bro. First thing I said, man, you know, I thank God for life every day. I pray every day, you know what I'm saying? And I pray that God removes all those people from me, you know know what I'm saying? And at at the end of the day, you know, to get to success, you you have to move different. Mm -hmm. So some of those people that might have to like leave behind or uh, you got to leave behind sometimes you just have to mm-hmm. and it does it doesn't mean that you don't like them anymore but it's mm-hmm. just more so of a, a, a of a, a personal reasons or mm-hmm. it could just be like listen you want to do your own thing god bless you yeah, i mean we can still work it out i don't yeah. burn bridges you yeah. know what i'm saying god willing if i'm ever that rich in, in life you know what I'm saying? I, I want to be able to, like, I don't know what I'll do with a billion. I want to help everybody. Yeah. I want to bring everybody to the top. Yeah. But am I prepared to be that that person? I mean, you know, I'm. I, that's just that's not really my personality. Not saying I'll go broke for somebody or whatever the case is, man. But, you know, I'm grinding right now mm-hmm. for my myself and my family, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like music is what's going to open that door. Mm-hmm. I'm like, 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 and, and there's a lot of people, I don't want to say a lot of people, but there are real specific people in my life that really at least help me get to this level where mm-hmm. I'm at today. You know what I'm saying? And those are the people I plan on, God willing, if anything ever happens, if anything ever, uh, anything successful ever happens, like for sure, like I want, I'm going to make sure I bring them mm-hmm. because I'm. I'm I'm loyal to those who give me opportunities. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm loyal to that. Mm-hmm. And I don't forget what people do, good or bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if people burn their bridge, I mean, that's just, you know, they, they that, that's just on them, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I'm 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 ready. I'm I'm ready for whatever God got planned for me, man. You know what I'm saying? I just I'm just I'm just ready to just take this to another level. That's what's up. All right, last thing I got is, 
you know, I guess on social media, it looks like producers always complain about uh, artists not wanting to pay them. Is that a, is that a real thing? Because you see these memes like they come in with thousands of dollars in their pockets, but they got to ask the producer for a free beat. <laughs> Man, listen, you listen, producers. Besides the engineers, because you can't forget the engineer. Never ever forget the engineer. Yeah, they're the ones that actually make the producers hot. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't think the producers actually add in all those. You know, those chops, those, you know, those those little frequent pauses in the beat sometimes, the the reverses, the, the effects. I don't ever think that. Most of the time it's the engineer. But producers get swept under the rug quick. You got to remember, the producer down there is the first person mm-hmm. you got to go to before you actually go to the engineer. Yep. And... We do a lot of labors. It's like going to a mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You go to a mechanic. They got to check your car out. They got to figure out the problem. They got to fix your car. That's like a producer. Yeah. Yeah. They got to check you out, Mm -hmm. hear what you want, Mm -hmm. and then they got to do all this, that, this, that, and the third. And then you're a, a, a rapper. You flashing all these bands. You flashing all this money. It's just human nature. Like, okay, yeah, you're a superstar, you're a celebrity. Sometimes you don't want to just go ahead and just charge the artist. Like, all right, you know, go ahead, slap on the wrist, go ahead, do it, do it, do it. go make, go make a banger. The notoriety sometimes is more important than the money. I can't front. Sometimes it is, but at the end of the day, if we go four or five songs in, and just I still ain't see like at least a complimentary hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, and you know, you on Instagram, which is like, you know, the news for everybody, mm-hmm. and you're flashing thousands and thousands of dollars, and I'm still, you know, just sitting here trying to figure out how I'm going to eat, yeah. and I got a slave for you? That's kind of unfair. Nah, you know is. what I'm saying? So, but, you know, I have I feel like, you know, I'm still grinding. I'm still building and establishing. So. You know, I've been through that a couple, t- a lot of times, actually. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm pretty sure there's more to come down, uh, come down the road. But mm-hmm. you know, we tightening up. We tightening Hold up. up. And right now, we just want you to uh, shout out all your social media handles, where the people can find you, up and cut, up and coming sure. artists that listen sure. to us. How can they find Brizzy on Dub? Make sure you pay him too. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that they can. Uh, Spend their money with you and get these bangers that you produce. Thank you, man. First of all, thank y'all for having me. Thank yeah. y'all for you know giving me a you know reaching out and and wanting to sit down with me to just even you know rap. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm definitely grateful for that. Um, but yes, uh, just to throw out some stuff out there for all those who are watching, I have a you know you can find me on all social media platforms. Mm-hmm. Brizzy on the beat uh, on Instagram. Uh, Twitter is this is Briz. Um, those are pretty much the two platforms I'm on. Um, I have projects on at, on all streaming platforms. Um, if you just type down Brizzy on the beat on anything from Apple Music to Spotify, uh, shout out to Spotify. I like what they're doing for all the independent artists. Uh, just search me. Um, I have projects and songs on there as well. Mm-hmm. With new material getting ready to drop, I'm dropping a new project December 17th called Progression Two. Mm-hmm. Um, progression is just what I'm I'm chasing. Like you know, I'm every that's all we're fighting for is progress. Yep. You know, this show progress. Um, you know, when when you reach a certain level, you look back and be like, yeah, I really progressed. And yeah. that's why I dropped a project called Progress. Um, I'm working on Progression Two. It's just. Um, it's just a project filled with all the instrumentals that I've done over the, the past year. And, um, you know, those are like real important to me. So it's going to be dropping on December the 17th. So whoever watches this, I pray that y'all download it, check it out, and let me know what y'all think. But on all social media platforms, Brizzy on the Beat, Twitter, well, Instagram, Brizzy on the Beat, Twitter, this is Briz. All right, well, thank you for coming mm-hmm. through, good brother. Appreciate and, uh, you for and, uh, having me. You know, before you leave, we're going we're gonna to talk to you about that song. How to properly incorporate it oh, into your business. No practices. doubt, no doubt, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. So thank y'all for checking us out, man. With my boy Briz on the beat, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, thank you again. Appreciate you. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Definitely thanks for coming through, man. Yes, for sure.
Yeah, yeah, so uh, at this time, we'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I'd like to thank my man Briz on the beat for coming through, supporting that. It's Brizzy on the beat. See, you said, you said Briz, it's Brizzy. Yo, I can't, I can't abbreviate a nigga name. I gotta say the whole thing. Yo, yo, he said it earlier. Like, I'm not fucking with this Yo, nigga. his name is not like a pimp named Slipback. Or some shit like that. Like right. his name's Brizzy on the beat. That nigga gonna so, go up in your mouth and then hit, block, hit a bro. 808 and a hi hat afterwards. Listen, I could block. And you can't get me. You gonna put you sound effects to knocking you the fuck out? I'm not getting knocked the fuck out. I've never been knocked the fuck out. Cause I can block. Alright. That's it. Yo, you think he gonna give me a free beat? No, he's gonna charge you a fuck nigga fee, though. I'm just saying, like, like a probably cause you're a 38 year old light skinned nigga. You think he gonna, you know what I mean? You think he'll work with me? No. <laughs> so, anyway, um, look, once again, we want to thank all y'all for tuning in to another episode of So Unprofessional. Um, just keep supporting us, supporting the way, keep giving us feedback on what you like, and we're going to continue to incorporate that into the show. Um, shout out to the whole State Talking Ish team, um, Brown Girl, TK, everybody else, the whole movement, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Peace. Make sure you uh, check out the uh, comment description section for all our social media links. T told me to say that. Was that good? Why are you listening to T? Who the... Yo, you're a different nigga, bro. You just be on other shit. I should crack you. Square the fuck up, nigga. All right, when the cameras go off. All right, we all see y'all next time. Peace.